there's a way to make an entrance. <laughs> My destiny. It was now a conspiracy of witches. Download Veely today. Envelopes involved, loads of paper involved, loads of typing involved, loads of words involved, loads of. I think money ready. I felt trapped in my flat sometimes, really, because you didn't want to open the windows, fear of bailiffs getting in, you didn't want to answer the door, certainly wasn't looking at the mail. It's carer, rent. TV, TV. So all that money and nothing for food. They'll set a date for possession after that date and you will then receive a notice of eviction. I've just let them down. It's a parent's place to make sure they're all safe and have a roof over their head and I've just gone to work and I've tried my best, yes I have, but it's just not been good enough. For the last year, we followed three families who, like so many others, were struggling with money. As the government poured billions in to save the bankers, people who were already hard up found there was little practical help on offer for them. And she screamed a, a horrible, howling scream. Tracy and Melvin bought their council house in Derby in 2004. At the time, a mortgage was less than the rent, but since then, interest rates have almost doubled. When we first took it out, it was about £300. It's now 400 and something pound. When you're trying to work out a budget, you, you work it out, don't you? And then something goes up, petrol goes up, now food's going up, mortgage rates go up, everything goes up at the same time. You have to juggle, don't you? And there comes a point where you think, I can't just juggle anymore. No to juggle with. <laughs> no to juggle with, yeah. Petrol's got £160 a month. Mm. Yeah, because petrol's gone up anyway, isn't it? Yeah. At one point, we didn't have to look at what we brought for shopping, but now we have to really yeah. shop, don't we? We don't just go willy-nilly to the Buy easiest. Buy the value stuff. <laughs> yeah. You can cut down on your food when you look at it. Feed the family for a fiver. Yeah. <laughs> I did that the other week, to last week. You did? <laughs> Are you getting the knives and forks? One, two, three. This was probably about 11, 12 pound, but it's only a simple meal, isn't it? Just a basic. They just kept putting the limits up, so then when we did feel that we hadn't got quite enough money. We'd got plenty of money to spend on the credit cards and we didn't, we didn't think it through, did we? <laughs> so we would go off to shops and think, oh, well, we'll do a shop on the credit card this week because, you know, we've got to feed them. It just gets out of control so easily. When you're a bit short and somebody phones you up and say, oh, you can top your loan up, that's what it was, wasn't it? Top, top your loan up. Yeah, they was on about getting it into one loan, so we'd make one payment, didn't we? To minimise the interest they were paying on their credit cards, the couple were advised to take out a loan secured against the house to pay off all their cards. These are the original ones when we first took out a loan with City Finance. 19,000, and that one's for 10,000. And then somehow it got to how it is now. Total of 44,000. You can need a new box. <laughs> We're struggling along to leave a house to a family. And then you think, well, the poor little mites are suffering now. Because when you're not happy, they, they're not happy. Children can see that straight through that, can't they, Melvin? Yeah. Well, they're witnessing this arguing, and yeah. 
you start taking it out on each other. I can't deal with your... Oh, why don't you just F off? Yeah. <laughs> like... No, I'm not <laughs> effing off. You can F off. <laughs> Only the other day. <laughs> I keep saying, if we got each other, it doesn't matter, does it? <laughs> At least if there's two of us against the world and then going along by yourself, it must be horrendous. Tracy manages a restaurant and Melvin is a car mechanic by trade. But when little Jack fell ill, Melvin had to stop work to look after him. I've got arthritis in my knee. And my ankle. Are you ready? It's like a heart in my knee, beating all the time. I couldn't walk up the stairs. My leg just kept giving way and I fell down the stairs once with all my CDs. Without Melvin's income and with the credit card consolidation loan secured against the house, the family is now in real danger of losing their home. We feel like you're letting the kids down for a start off. You feel, sometimes you feel like a criminal because you've got in so much debt. <laughs> you feel like people are judging you. If you could just get it out of your head for a few hours, but you don't switch off. I just get like churning in my stomach and butterflies and I just don't feel hungry. Just can't be bothered to eat, I just feed everybody else and that's it. Some days you can't wait to get to sleep at night so that you, you ain't got no worries. <laughs> Sometimes you don't want to wake up in the morning. <laughs> it's six o'clock on Thursday the 7th of February. Good morning. Sleepless nights, worrying about money problems, something more and more of us are experiencing, according to citizens' advice experts. Now, debt is our number one problem. 1.7 million debt problems were handled by CABs last year. Maria is a social worker in London, but she's currently on maternity leave after the birth of her second daughter, Angel. Maria's come to CAB because she's finding it hard to cover the expenses that come with a new baby. I'm not on income support, I'm on a maternity allowance. Mm. That doesn't allow you to apply for any other benefit apart no, from maternity no. allowance. That's it. I did check that out for you, but you fell into a little hole. I yeah. did, didn't I? <laughs> I fell into lots of holes, yeah. right, I tell you. <laughs> oh, I did. <laughs> but I'm going to dig myself out. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I think so. Maria had been living with Angel's father for several years before they both agreed to have a baby. But once Maria was pregnant, the relationship broke down. Having lost her partner's income and now managing only on maternity pay until she goes back to work, Maria's debts have started to spiral. There's a student loan, there's a loan from the bank and I also bought a car uh, and that was a HP agreement. The car at the moment is taking half of our income which is ridiculous. I would tell anybody doing anything like that, get it sorted, get rid of it. So the car has to go. But it's something that I'm yet to tell my oldest daughter because I don't know what she's going to be like when I tell her. Mum, sometimes I get... Because I am hiding it from her. But for me, I'd like to see it as keeping the adult stresses as the adult stresses and letting her be free to be the nine-year-old that she is. So how come you got so much of your lunch left, babe? Didn't feel hungry. Didn't feel hungry? Did you have a particularly big breakfast? I don't think you did. No. OK. Those are homes up here, like, for sale. We'd love one, wouldn't we, Cam? Nice big house. <laughs> that big one on the corner. Yeah. I've got my handbag, Cam. Well done. Once Maria fell behind with repayments on the various debts she had previously easily been able to afford, her creditors started to put on the pressure. And that's when things became very stressful, having to do with all the creditors, the phone calls. And I'm just quite a typical person in not wanting to open the mail, not wanting to answer the phone. A little bit of sugar on these strawberries, right? Okay. No, I think I'll do it, actually. 
so your phone's going first thing in the morning, even before you've gone to school. And I'm trying to hide a lot of this from my eight-year-old because she doesn't deserve to have that thrust upon her. I didn't think it was fair. It was my mess, not our mess. So the bank gives you £100. Yeah. And you have to give them back £110. Oh. What do you think about that? I would say, uh, that even though the £100 is a very good offer, but I have to give you £10 back, £10 more back, no thank you, no. I've got your yoghurt order. Good stuff. But despite Maria's attempts to protect her daughter, Kamaya knew that something was worrying her mum. Sometimes you can just feel like your sense can feel that your mum or your dad is really worried. You know, you just wonder how you're going to find a solution, especially if you've spoken to all the agencies. And they can't help. Um, it's quite lonely, quite frightening. With her creditors becoming increasingly impatient, Maria needs to find a solution soon. If you thought your gas bill had already gone up a lot, then steal yourself for this. Industry experts reckon gas bills will go up by another 43% over the next year and electricity by 21%. On average, that works out at £360 extra per home. On the other side of London from Maria lives Michael. For most of his life, he's been a professional chef, working in top hotels like the Dorchester and the Savoy. <sighs> At 64, he's now retired due to ill health and needs a carer, Maggie, to look after him for several hours a day. The care for you might get him clean. He gets a bad name. But he's proud that throughout his working life, he was never in debt. I don't think anybody had such a thing as credit when I was a kid. You, you bought what you could afford. If something was 10 quid and you were earning £1.76 a week, it, it took you five weeks to get there. If a bottle of milk was fourpence and you had threepence, I'd look, you have to wait till tomorrow. <laughs> Do you want the eggs on top of your bread, Mike? This little room here is my little world now. Between the microwave and the cooker and that silly little oven, we live quite well. As long as we don't spend any money. <laughs> Things changed for Michael seven years ago, when out of the blue he suffered a heart attack. I went to the doctors with a bad cough, and while I was in the doctors, I coughed and I went over like a ton of bricks. And I ain't been right since. <laughs> I don't like going doctor because every time I got there, they, she said I'd send you to the hospital. When I got to the hospital, they find something else wrong. Strokes, and then you got the heart attack, and then you had pulmonary something or other. I ended up on all these machines that puffing and panting for me. Got to stop for a bit. No problem, sorry. Man. Strokes going. Keep drinking, my boys just disappear. In 2003, Michael was offered a loan to make some improvements to his housing association flat, but in common with around a million other pensioners in the UK, he's fallen behind with repayments and is now struggling with his debts. We know that your contractual repayment has not been made. The total amount now outstanding is £419. We will consider cases of financial difficulty sympathetically and positively, sure. and we'll do all we can to help you overcome any problems. Yeah, I bet they do. So everything I just keep sending to you? Mm, everything. Just put it in a post. Fiona, a caseworker from Blackfriars Advice Centre, has come to work out Michael's monthly budget, an essential step to getting a handle on his finances. Um, your housekeeping, that's going to be £215, because you've got special needs, you've got special dietary needs. I just think you've missed something up there. Go on, what have I missed? £242 a month. 
220 I've got for mm. carers. Well, it's 220. The cost of Michael's care makes all the difference. At first, his carers were supplied by the local authority, but because sometimes he would be sent different carers every day, Michael was advised to switch to claiming disability living allowance and employ his favourite carer, Maggie, directly. Maggie's wages added up to £554 a month. And when we actually got the payment through, it was 414 It turns out I have to pay the rest of it. The one thing they said would help us completely buried me. Why is that? It's costing me £88 more to live than I'm getting. And guess what? Nowhere you turn, nobody can do anything about it. Every country in 2008, every government has one aim, to maintain stability through the world economic slowdown. Mr Deputy Speaker, this year's budget is a responsible budget that will secure stability in these times of global economic uncertainty. And we will do everything in our power to maintain stability, making sure that everyone, no matter what their circumstances, can exploit their full potential. Last year, the average household debt in the UK rose to over £60,000, the highest it's ever been. In Derby, Tracy and Melvin's mortgage and other loans total around 135000 The struggle to cover repayments is taking its toll on Tracy, and she's taken sick leave from her job managing a restaurant. It can be very daunting going in and telling your doctor you don't know what's wrong with you. You just can't stop crying. And then when you start to tell him what's been going off the last seven or eight months, they just look at you as if to say, well, surely don't you realise you've been through so much? Because the loans were secured against the house, Tracy and Melvin have now received letters from the finance company threatening to take them to court. They're up to date with payments on their main mortgage, so they're going to a local advice centre, Derbyshire Housing Aid, to find out exactly where they stand. But on the first mortgage, you, you, you've stayed on top of that one? Yeah, yeah, we've, we've yeah. not missed a payment. That will obviously that. help with you, the showing that you've done them. Some people just think, well, I'm going to lose my house, I'll stop paying. And that, that goes we we nearly them. did, didn't we? We nearly, mm. we nearly thought, what's the point here? Mm. <laughs> Eventually, what it comes down to is that if you haven't got enough finances to meet the liability here, then unfortunately you're going to lose this item. If the house repossess, is it sold? And then the mortgage is cleared and the debt, the loans are cleared, or is it they just take over the house and take mm. what they want and where they Well, they're the obliged to sell the property for the best price that they can get. Mm. But if there is any equity left in the property after everybody's had their bit, um, then that should be returned to you at some point. I think it's, I think it's, it's sad, isn't it? Well, we've got to admit it, Mum. We can't carry on. Yeah. Well, which way do you want to go? you want to fight to keep the house, or shall we just...? Is the job a possibility? Well, I could go back on the bins. You know, it's like town agency where you just go down, at, you have to go down at six o'clock every morning. You keep saying if you start work, but we still have money taken off us anyway, if you start work or not. We will. We won't, yeah, I mean. we won't be any better off. If we keep that house, we're just going to struggle and struggle and struggle forever, aren't we? I think it's best. Well, just to let it go. Just let it go. And we'll do what we can with it. It's going to be a bit of a rough ride, but... Yeah. Um, just... 
in London, Maria is not in danger of repossession because she doesn't own her flat, but she's been advised to consider the equally radical step of bankruptcy. She's going to talk over her options with her mother, who went through her own financial difficulties when Maria was a child. I still have those memories of, you know, the electric and gas having to be cut off and put back on again and all that sort of stuff. It was very difficult times, I think, in the 70s for a new migrant family who'd bought their own home and had five children to deal with as well. It was just tough and they'd done a really good job. You know, my father was never out of work. My mum held down two jobs often. Hello. <laughs> She's brown. <laughs> she is, isn't she? Hello. Hi, Hi. Hi Aunt Madge. I'm all right. Hello, hello. What do you mean she's got darker, Mum? Yeah. Was she? Yeah. We were right in the garden yesterday. Bankruptcy is just a really big step to make. It's just, it's, it, it is like a dirty word, isn't it? And it's also something not somebody like me would do. It seems so drastic. It is drastic, It Mom. seems so drastic. It is drastic. Yeah. It is drastic. I know you're really disappointed. Yeah, aren't you? Yes. I know you are. Yeah. But you know what, Mum? I don't want to be frightened in my home or the prospect of, you know, my oldest one getting wind of our situation. Because I think at the moment she hasn't, but I don't know. I mean, no kids. But I'm still not comfortable, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. Not comfortable at all. Yeah. I mean, you'll be going from month to month, you know, surviving till the next payday. And that's how life was for us. Right. You know, it's sort of, it's going sort backwards. Of going backwards, which is terrible. And it's no different to your mum and dad. Which is not what you expected, right? No. Not what you come to England for. No, no. no. Lord, we pray that you will bless us as we eat this food. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. You, you hear of companies that have gone bankrupt, and people that have squandered mm. um, money. Mm. But it's a big word for us, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It is for me. It's a big it deal. It doesn't come into my um, vocabulary. It <laughs> doesn't come mm -mm. in. I'd be in a lot more trouble if I didn't. Do it. Well, yeah, because they're going to have companies after me for years, aren't they? Mm. Mm. So difficult. Mm. But you trust me it's going to be all right? Yeah. You trust me? Yeah. I you know, know you, you, you know feel gonna, good about it. You yeah. know I'm going to pull through this mm. one, don't you? You mm. know I am. You know I always yeah. do. <laughs> <laughs> It's seven o'clock on Thursday the 15th of May. The nice decade is over, says bank chief. Britain faces two years of economic pain and could sink into recession. Michael's carer, Maggie, has returned to France, so he's now employing an old friend of his, Dennis. But his outgoings haven't changed, and like over half of those struggling with debt, he finds he just can't afford adequate food or heating. It's the electric that kills me. I think we're up to about 700 quid in debt now. I've had to disconnect my breathing machines. I can't afford to run them. You turn them on, it's like turning a immersion heater on. Sometimes I sit there looking at all them tablets and think, there's a shortcut here. <laughs> no, I'm just getting to the point where I'm sick to death of not being able to eat a proper meal. I'm sick to death of not being able to buy a birthday card for somebody. And I'm getting really sick to death of having to find the cheapest wherever it is possible to buy. Michael's debt advisor, Fiona, has suggested that he should consider going bankrupt. But in order to file for bankruptcy, he first has to find the court fees. His social worker has called him to talk through the options. Yeah, well, I'll have to get £450, won't I? Will you want to do that? Or will you consider moving from I'm not going in any sheltered accommodation. It's cost me thousands to do this up. You lot didn't pay for this. I did. 
the patio, my garden. And now you want me to go in? Oh, dear. No, 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 no. I'll go bankrupt, hell with it. I'm certainly not moving out of my house. Shh. They must be bloody joking. I'm going to stick me in an old folks' home in one room and they sit in the same chair every day until somebody dies and they move round one. Oh, no, 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 no. In Derby, things are coming to a head. Tomorrow, Tracy and Melvin have to go to court over the loan they took out to pay off their credit cards. Although they've always paid their main mortgage on time and in full, with repossession threatened and Tracy now getting only statutory sick pay, she's wondering whether she could skip this month's payments. We're going to get the house probably repossessed tomorrow. We might as well stop the mortgage before they take it, might not we? Because we're going to need it if we're trying to put a deposit together and things like that, aren't we? Well, let me stop a direct debit, will they? And you think to, tomorrow's too late to stop it? Yes, because it's the weekend. It'll come out. It won't come out Monday, will it? No. I think as the court case has got closer and closer, it gets more and more stressful. At least after tomorrow, we'll know where we're going and what we're doing. I'll just go. Just yeah. go. No, just go. It's like when me and Melvin are arguing, I was thinking, oh, there's any cut, this could only happen to me. I could probably lose my house and my husband all in one week. I'll see you when I see you then. <sighs> Where do you go? Yeah. Is it that door or that door? That's way out. I feel guilty and you haven't done anything really, have you? It's a similar situation when the police are following you in a car, isn't it? You haven't done anything wrong, but you keep looking around you all the time. So the 11th of July, that's the date for yeah. possession. Yeah. After that date, as I said, the lender can apply for a bailiff's warrant. Right. Now, if you've found someone to sell to, up to that date, then yeah. what you can do when you receive the notice of eviction is apply to suspend, oh, right. to suspend your eviction yeah. on the basis that, that, we're selling. that you're selling it. Yeah. Instead of granting repossession straight away, the judge has told Tracy and Melvin they should try to sell the house themselves to repay the loans. But she's given them just six weeks to find a buyer. Just. Oh. Just. If only you were a bird, you could fly away. Yes. Yes. Should we go into the office? Maria has decided bankruptcy is her only option. She officially starts the process today. Right, question one. What is the petition? What on earth is that? Any property or possessions abroad? I'd love some. On the other side of London, Michael has his death advisor, Fiona, to help him fill in his bankruptcy petition. Are you, or in the last five years, have you been involved in the management of a company? No. In the last year, have you been involved in proceedings for divorce? No. She says motor vehicle. Do I just put yes? I knew that the interest rate of 39.9% was ridiculous. You don't look at, or I didn't look at, the full picture in, th in terms of 39.9% over X amount of years means you're buying this little cheap car twice. Don't look at it in those terms. Any property or sums due to you under a will? No. 
Any property of any value, paintings, furniture, jewellery? Yes. What have you got? All this lot. No, I'm not putting that down. Well, if, That's something nice to look at. They're you Stephen know? Canelli, them. They're all limited editions. <laughs> I'm filling out some documents. Oh, what, what uh, 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 listen, these are really important documents. You've got to write on them. Wow, wasn't that a lot of money? Oh, isn't it, Cam? We'd like some of that, wouldn't we? Mm. Hello. I've got a loan out with the Halifax. They've sold it on. That's what she said. She didn't say it's gone to a debt collection agent. She said it's been sold on. So Halifax has already sold the debt. It's so Halifax has already been paid. Two years, it doesn't matter what I close down, they want them all. It's 45,000. Over. That's a lot of money. That's a lot of money. So, how do you rack up that amount of debt? This is my third attempt um, at completing the form. I think you'd have to be really good to do it all in one go. Oh, I can't cope anymore. The house price plunge is worse since 1991. The average price is about £15,000 since October. I didn't say it was going to be easy, that we'd put the house up and someone come along and just buy it, but unless you do it, you, you don't know. Well, put it, it might be one of that, but what's the point of doing anything to it? I'm not on about a, all of it, I'm just saying to tidy it up a bit. Yeah, get some paint then. You don't think it will sell? Mm, how can it? No, well, we might be just lucky, eh? You never know, our luck's got to change at some point, hasn't it? There's no harm in trying, is there? No, just get it on the market then. There's no point doing it all up though, is there? Not all up, just make it like a facelift sort of thing. Well, now we're supposed to do that. Can't even afford to fix my bike up. Yeah, but you going on about that bike, what is the point of fixing that bike so up? So get, get Oh, job. yeah, of course. To get where? To go where? On the bins. Oh, right. So suddenly we're going down the bins, are we? Yeah. Suddenly we were, we're doing stuff, are we? Oh, right. I think you need to get your priorities right, Malf. I really do think you need to get it right. And you're on the back getting the job. Right. You've said that about how long? And how many jobs have you tried for? None, because you keep saying I can't get one. After days of form filling, Maria is going back to the CAB. Her advisor, Adio, will check over her petition before she files for bankruptcy. I mean, the incredible guilt that this form brings up, when you actually have to write down all your debt creditors, if, and the figure at the end, is quite alarming to be truthful. One debt that particularly concerns Adio is Maria's council tax. So what's the situation with that, anyway? It's been paid by my parents or by my mother. Really? Mm -hmm. I now pay my mother back at a rate of £30 a month. And so I get to work, obviously, once I go to work and I earn more different money, I'll be paying her more, but I pay her back. It was nearly £700. That would be... Now, this is list of your unsecured creditors. Aren't they a lovely list? <laughs> It goes on as well. We do hold a list of your creditor, your creditor list on, on our record. We could have easily printed that out. Anyway, it, it's not done. It's, it's a pity because um, if you'd have said that before when we ordered the form, because that was a, that was a nightmare. That was this was an I, absolute. I would, yeah, I could imagine. Anyway. It's a difficult process. Period. I think the main thing that makes it difficult for me is kind of oh, careful, darling. 
is kind of the guilt that I carry for being in this situation. So logically, you know, I know how I arrived here, but it still feels like I'm at fault somehow. And all this digging up all the stuff kind of confirms that. It feels like punishment. <laughs> Go to the High Court to file for bankruptcy, I need to have a minimum of £400 in my pocket. And how does the parking fine fit in there? Oh my god, I don't know what this borough charges for. I... It doesn't, does it? Not with 370 quid needed for bankruptcy fees yet to be found. It's six o'clock on Tuesday, the 1st of July. Good morning. House prices continue to fall. In fact, there's more evidence of a really significant correction occurring in the housing market. The latest figures show the annual drop would be 16%. We're looking at 95, I should imagine. Realistically, I think. £95,000 would have been just enough to clear the debts secured against the property. But with only six weeks to make a sale in a falling market, Tracy and Melvin have been advised to offer the house for just 82000 Should you do upstairs and then the garden after? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Even if they do sell it, at that price, they too will probably have to go bankrupt to clear the rest of their debts. Do you know that couple? Are they buying it up? I don't know. I don't they know. might be. They might be. They're going to see how much it's cost to put it to where they want it. It's strange having somebody else in the, in the house making plans about your house and you stood there. Some of the things they were saying, we were going to do anyway. It's like the doors, we were going to change the doors anyway. That's the hard part, people walking around and making comments. I mean, I know it's not a palace, but it is my home. Oh, the decoration in here is a bit... Oh, no, I don't like the colour. It's a nice colour, thank you very much. <laughs> oh, thank you so much again. Yeah. yeah. That's fine. <laughs> We've got to take whatever else they offer us. We haven't got a choice, Brett, of where we're going. And it might be that they offer us a house now that. 14-year-old Brett is unhappy at the prospect of leaving the family home. I'm just trying to keep us all together, Brett. And sometimes it's very hard. And sometimes, yeah, I do work long hours because I've tried to get a home for us. Like when we move house, we'll all be better off financially. And I will be able to do your things and, and sort you out. I just need you to be patient for the next couple of months, that's all. Even I couple none on sometimes, you know. But you are clever and you can do anything and you can achieve what you want to do. You don't want to end up like me, do you? government's going to try, it says, to reduce the number of home repossessions. Yvette Cooper is Chief Secretary to the Treasury and joins us now. Good morning. Good morning, Jim. What can you do to ease the repossession problem? <coughs> Today, Michael files for bankruptcy. He has to do this in person at the Royal Courts of Justice, so he's leaving his flat for the first time this year. Actually, I'm such an awkward bugger that I'll probably get to the court and drop dead. 
so they don't get the, they get the check back as well. <laughs> Now you know what it's like to travel USP. Listen, I'm not too far from home. If you need me, I can come back to school and pick you up, all right, sweetheart? But mummy needs your help this morning. I need you to go off and have a really good day because nothing bad's happening here. All right, honey? Bye, I love you. Love you as well. It's been a bit sort of sad, really, in a way that everything's had to come to this, but there's, there's no, other, no other avenue to take. You know, it's really big stuff as far as I'm concerned. This is really something that I never thought I'd have to do. It still feels a bit scary, actually. I'm going for a joyride before you take me in. Tracy and Melvin are also going to court. They've accepted an offer of 75000 for their house, so they're asking the judge to postpone repossession and let the sale go through. We stand still. But unless Tracy can prove she's on statutory sick pay, this process will incur court fees that the family simply can't afford. I've had to sign a, a form to say that I'll take um, another way slip in, maize. We've got June's, we've got July's. Well, that's all right. But it's but, no, wages. it's not. It's it one is. and a half. It's not, it's but it doesn't matter. They need it, Melvin. So it's so like you say, you know they're not having it. The courts are asking for it. My, in a minute we'll get sausage rolls. Come on, sweetheart. Well, the quicker we get it, Alex. The quicker when we get all this done, the quicker we can get what we want. I know I said I'd get you a sausage roll and I'll get you something in a minute. Yeah, you've just got to be good this morning, sweetheart. I know it's boring. I'd rather be anywhere but here, but we've got to do it. Do you want to phone Gavin to check that we've got the right stuff? Got no credit. Out the way, Jack. Get one out of here. No, out the way, I said. Oh, yeah. Out the way, I said. Come on. Alex, please let Mummy fill the form in. No, Alex. You Alex, must, you, you come here. Talk to me. Melvin, which of these do I take? Right. What's he just done? He just slapped Alex. Right, take him up to his room while I'm doing Go on, this. off you go to your room now. <laughs> Don't answer back! <laughs> All you have to do is do as you're told. <laughs> Please read pages 9 and 10 of the booklet for more information on how to complete this section, yeah? So I then goes over here, yeah? So let me find where I read it. We fill the form in then. Yeah, we fill the form in. Mulvey, what are you doing? I'm sitting at the pissing table! Can you lot wipe the tables down after you? And rinse the dishcloths out. Gross annual income. How can you do that when you're on income, when you're on what, sir? It don't make sense. That's why I was trying to get you well, to help me. Sense. That's why I was getting frustrated, Melvin, because I'm not very good at forms in the first place, am I? What's full remission because based not. on gross annual Look, income? it says to me here, right, none of these go to section four, which is what I did. Look, any other income, blah, 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 goes to section six now. We haven't got to fill that in because you've just given that, haven't you? And then that's just you. Well, I've I haven't got to give them anything. <sighs> Look. Let me explain this. Melvin, don't <sighs> shout at me because you I'll shout. I'll tell you what, in a bit, I'm just going to walk out and you can just fucking do it all on your own. 
It's all like the fucking shit. One person is declared bankrupt in the UK every five minutes. <sighs> it's all done. No more keys. No more forms. No more CAB. Though I may go back for them for something else. That bit's done. It's done. It's complete. It's absolutely done. But I've got my certificate. Do you want to see my certificate? I am now a bankruptee. Bloody heck. I feel like I can breathe again. Literally, you know, literally, literally take a deep breath. I feel like I can redo that. Michael is also celebrating his new status as a bankruptee. I can't buy any of you drinks. Thank Christ. <laughs> 1.18 in 18 months, not bad. Because I won't get another one now for about another two years. <laughs> has risen to its highest level since it was formulated more than 10 years ago, forcing the Bank of England to write a letter of explanation to the Chancellor. We're collecting a car that this lady has voluntarily surrendered to the finance company. We're doing it all day, every day, seven days a week. Uh, a lot of people can't meet their payments at the moment. Well, that's the failed one. Oh, is it failed then? Well, this is, yeah, it's failed. Right, so it currently hasn't got an MOT? Basically. Oh, good job we put it on the truck then, isn't it? Get out there as soon as possible, my neighbours go to work. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think we've got about eight to pick up today. Good morning. Please do telephone in to you, Mr. Dave. Yes. Um, after that, I want to ask some questions. Now she's bankrupt, all Maria's finances are controlled by a so-called official receiver. Today, he's calling her for the first time and wants to know more about money she gave to her mother and sister repaying a loan for her council tax. Uh, my mum think that was £2,000. These payments may be considered what's called a preferential payment. What that means is that parents have been repaid Okay. They were paid last year, though. Yes, yes. Mm. This journey goes back about two years or so. Mm. What I need to do is to get their details and potentially we may have to try and recover those funds back. So really? From my family members? Yes, yes. I'm just letting you know about that now. Would you be able to give me um, a name and address for your mother and your sister? Wow. That makes me feel really quite ill. You borrowed some money over a period of time from someone and then you pay them back and somebody else says, ah, ah, you can't have that. We've got to have that back off you. Now, how are they going to pay that? Mother's a pensioner. No, that's hit me really hard, actually. That frightened me. Made me feel sick. I never thought for a second it would draw in my mother and my sister. No, I didn't, I didn't think that at all. There's something wrong here. Michael is also finding that bankruptcy is not the simple solution he was hoping for. I have no idea what the hell's going on. I've still got that bunch of bills. I'm still being threatened. I'm still getting more charges. 
The bankruptcy doesn't seem to have happened at all. All the people that I owed money to before that I went bankrupt with are still claiming it. I've sent you some letters with a load of bills in, but I don't know who's dealing with me. I've never heard from you, and I've got it. That's him. Uh, I don't know, because I don't know what's going on. Uh, they're taking £84 a month, and I never agreed that. If they charged that interest before the bankruptcy date, then you're not liable to pay for it. But if these charges are incurred after the bankruptcy date, then you would have to pay for it. It's just getting dapper and dapper. I'm in as bad a state now as I was when we started off. I felt elated before. It's all gone. All the problems have gone. The bloody happened. Worst of all is a bill from the Inland Revenue relating to the time when Michael was employing Maggie as his carer. They say I haven't paid £5,000 towards Maggie's tax. Well, it's a load of cobblers, if you ask me, because I've never known the tax. It'd take a year to tell you. But the only trouble is, we never claimed it at the bankruptcy, but it didn't go in. So we may have to do another bankruptcy just for the tax man. I said to somebody the other day, I've ordered some flowers for my garden, 20 odd quid. You could have paid a bill with that. I said, yeah. And I could sit in here with the windows blacked out, no electric, no gas, and freeze to death. At least when I've got my flowers out there, I can sit and look at them. I still sit out here, not quite the same. Almost two months have passed since Tracy and Melvin's last court hearing. The sale still hasn't gone through, and the local authority has not found them a council house, so the family is living day by day. You just wonder what's going to be coming for us all. I've got about £70 left in my bank, £20 in my wallet now, so I've got about £90. Well, it's not known where we're going to be or where we're going to go, and once we move, will all of this stress suddenly go? You can never see the end to it, can you? I need to get a some money out of this mortgage, because it's only got about £1,000 in it. Well, I've got a bit of money in there, but I'm not going to use it for anything. I thought we'd be in somewhere by now, and then when we couldn't privately rent, that was that. We well, are trapped, aren't you? You can't do that. I'm not living in limbo. It's like getting a job. How can you get a job? You don't even know where you're going to be next week. <laughs> that was all messed up. Yeah, that's what I mean. What do you mean, messed up? Everything's been messed up. What do you mean? That we're going to be homeless. What, how we've become homeless? Because yeah. we can't afford to live here, but Remember when Melvin lost yeah, his it's job? It's our house. No, no, we have to pay a mortgage. We couldn't afford to pay the mortgage. So we run behind on it. So now we haven't got anywhere to live because we can't live here because they're taking the house back off us because we didn't pay enough money to them. You know? If they take our house, yeah. then can they take stuff as well? No. We've got to find somewhere to put it all. Can you see why me and Melvin are a bit on the edge? And why your behaviour doesn't help? What? Why your behaviour doesn't help because we're on the edge about where we're all going to be living. Maria's official receiver did pursue her mother and sister for money he believed should have been included in her bankruptcy. But after four months of investigation, he's accepted that they need not make any repayments. And I had to show them what I get, what my monthly income was. Just felt really intrusive and really ugly. Yeah. And I felt so guilty. Yeah. I felt yeah. so guilty. I just thought, how are we going to get out of this one? But up to the last minute, I thought it was the wrong thing. 
with you, Bob. Yeah, I just thought, deep That's down, it's not for us. I thought it was like magic. I thought once you filed, I thought it did all go away. Mm -hmm. But then the bills came in for months and months and months and months and months and months and months. All of those were your responsibility. But I do feel there is there is a level of guilt. It's not guilt that I think about every day or every month, no, I must admit. Not, now there. things have calmed down. It's there. My guilt is that I was unable to help you. Oh, you don't feel guilty about it, do you? Do you really? Yeah, yeah. No. You think, if only I could have helped her. You'd have needed 30 grand to do it. <laughs> <laughs> you, could, you helped a great deal, Mum. You've got nothing to feel guilty for. No. <coughs> it's December, and Tracy and Melvin still haven't found anywhere else to live. Seven months on from their first court appearance in May, the constant uncertainty has taken its toll on Tracy. I've took the tablets that the doctor gave me, but it don't take the thoughts out of your head. Just no to that. And that's the hard part, trying to keep happy and a nice spray face on it for the rest of them. And then inside you're thinking, this is a complete mess. I've let them down. And having to tell the children no all the time. They don't understand it's because we haven't got the money to do it. They seem to take it personally. That's another hard thing, explaining to the children. Hi, can I put that there? The eviction date is now January the 13th, but that is final. We can't appeal against that anymore. So we just need to get a house, really, which is hard. Reader told me two years ago that I would be a homeless person. I'd have never believed you. Oh. Uh, no. No. Uh. They make it so easy for you to get into debt. Like, the banks give you a loan, they're telling you you can afford it, and you think, oh, well, if they say I can, I can afford it. Just rubbing their hands, all the interest they're going to get. But if we'd got some proper advice earlier on, it probably wouldn't have got this bad. But we just didn't know what to do. I mean, then circumstances, you just... You don't even talk to your friends or family about it. You just... At first, it's very embarrassing, but as time goes on, you think, well, <laughs> we're not the only ones, are we? So... But there is a stigma to it, isn't there? But I think that stigma might be going a little bit now because sooner or later there's going to be lots and lots of people. It's going to be tough, babe. It's one step at a time at the moment. It's not one day at a time anymore. I've left that one behind, but I will, I'll get back there. I will get back there, slowly but surely. No, nothing is, you know, nothing's forever. This is my learning curve. Um, and I'm on it. I understand it, respect it. We just keep on keeping on, but just one step at a time. <laughs> Take your credit cards, all of them, and just chop them in half. Because your biggest problem is you get so far behind, you think I'll just pay that one month by credit. And you pay you. And once you start that, you, you've had it. You just need to get help before it gets into a mess like we did. Just swallow your pride. Pride's cost us a very lot.